Hey guys, welcome back to Cyber Platter. Today we'll discuss a topic that will help you prepare for your CISSP examination. Let's discuss domain 1.6 that is develop, document and implement security policies, standards, procedures and guidelines. We will also talk about the topic baselines. While technical controls are crucial, documents like policies, standards, procedures, guidelines, baselines form the core of an information security program. Policies set the foundational enduring principles while standards, procedures and guidelines provide specific details. While these elements differ in nature, they are interconnected and play various roles. Understanding these distinctions, relationships and diverse applications of policies is crucial. Successful development and implementation of information security measures require alignment with the organization's mission, goals and objectives. These documents collectively serve as the blueprint for a robust information security program offering governance, valuable guidance, decision support, legal authority and risk management. Neglecting these foundational documents often results in the implementation of expensive and ineffective security controls lacking uniformity and strategic alignment. So internal governance includes security policy, uh, standards, procedures and guidelines and this internal governance supports and articulates external governance such as laws and regulations. Governance is guided by senior management's oversight. Senior management defines security scopes, identifies protection needs, and understands business requirements and compliance obligations. And collaboration with security officers ensures the implementation of effective policies and controls. Now let's talk about these individual elements. First, let's start with uh, policies. Policies are high level management directives. Policies are mandatory. That is, for example, adhering to your company's sexual harassment policy is required even if you don't agree with it. They don't delve into specifics and remain at a high level. For instance, a server security policy discusses protecting the confidentiality, integrity and availability of the system without using low level terms like Linux or Windows. All policies should contain basic um, components such as purpose, scope, responsibilities, and compliance. So the purpose describes the need for the policy. Scope outlines the covered systems and entities. Responsibilities detail the roles of individuals and teams. And compliance addresses the effectiveness of policies and consequences of uh, consequences for violations. There are different types of policies, including program policy, issue specific policy, and system specific policy. Program policy establishes an organization's information security program, while issue specific policies focus on specific security issues. System specific policies apply decisions to actual computers, networks, and applications. Now we will talk about security policies. Security policies as part of internal governance represent the requirements imposed by senior leadership on the security management program. They provide direction and dictate requirements for organizational personnel. Policies are formal statements establishing principles to guide decisions and actions while standards, procedures and guidelines support and detail the implementation of policies. Then there is something called as organizational security policy. Organizational security policies are also known as master security policies. They set the foundation for an organization security program. They are developed with a focus on business objectives, must be easily understood and integrate security into business functions. They are forward thinking, regularly reviewed and adapted to changes. Let's see some of the examples of organizational security policies. There is acceptable use policy. Uh, it's AUP. So AUP is a set of rules and guide, uh, guidelines established by an organization to regulate the use of its information technology resources and assets by employees, contractors and other authorized users. 
the primary purpose of an aup is to ensure that the organization's it resources are used in responsible ethical and secure manner the other examples of uh, organizational security policies include risk management policy vulnerability management policy data protection policy access control policy uh, change control policy physical security uh, policy many like this something i forgot to mention is that issue specific policies are also called as functional policies uh, like i said they address specific security issues in detail for example an email security policy outlines acceptable usage and privacy issues related to email actually policies fall under three main categories first is regulatory advisory and informative regulatory policies ensure compliance with industry regulations advisory policies strongly advise behaviors and activities and informative policies provide information without explicit compliance requirements so security policies including standards guidelines and uh, procedures form the basis of an organization's information security program they outline goals rules and responsibilities roles are defined by tasks and responsibilities fit into roles rather than assigning specific tasks to individuals okay policy is frequently utilized as evidence that senior management has demonstrated due diligence in safeguarding the organization against potential risks such as data disclosure cyber security attacks disasters etc now let's talk about standards security standards are mandatory detailed and measurable requirements that support policy goals they ensure uniform implementation across the organization specifying how hardware software and user behavior should comply they are tactical documents that provide a strategic framework for the uniform implementation of technology and procedures across the organization they define specific expectations and behaviors ensuring compliance with policy goals organization standards may cover hardware and software usage user behavior and more enforcing uniformity across the organization so then there is baselines baselines you can consider at the same level as standards or as a subset of standards baselines establish the minimum security controls needed for a particular configuration providing a consistent reference point so like i mentioned baselines uh, set the minimum security level that every system must meet creating a foundational secure state um, baselines are mandatory baselines are specific to system types and may reference industry or government uh, standards such as tcsec itsec or nist they offer a reference point for subsequent security measures so in summary standards are specific and granular uh, giving direction to support broader policies while baselines provide a consistent basis for an organization security architecture both contribute to the overall security framework ensuring a uniform and effective approach to safeguarding information and systems next let's talk about procedures a procedure or a standard operating procedure sop is a comprehensive step step by step document providing detailed instructions on implementing specific security mechanisms controls or solutions it can cover the entire system deployment operation or focus on specific products or aspects such as firewall deployment or updating antivirus uh, definitions procedures are often system and software specific requiring updates as the underlying hardware and software evolve their purpose is to ensure the integrity of business processes ensuring compliance with policies standards and guidelines thus facilitating standardized secu- standardized security across all systems so basically they provide detailed instructions on how to implement specific policies and meet standards these these detailed instructions are crucial for the practical implementation of policies standards and guidelines in an operational environment 
For instance, if a policy mandates proper authentication for individuals accessing confidential information, supporting procedures define steps for authorization criteria, implementation of access control mechanisms, configuration details, and auditing procedures. Procedures are detailed enough to be understandable and useful for diverse individuals, ensuring that the execution aligns with the overarching security framework. Now let's discuss guidelines. Guidelines offer recommendations on the implementation of standards and baselines. They serve as operational guides for both security professionals and users, providing flexibility to be customized for unique systems and or conditions. Unlike standards or policies, guidelines are not mandatory. Instead, they suggest which security mechanism should be deployed without prescribing describing specific products or control configurations. They include methodologies, suggest actions, and serve as supplementary information. Guidelines are discretionary recommendations. Guidelines can be valuable advice such as creating a robust password using a specific method. Users have the flexibility to create strong passwords without strictly adhering to these guidelines. Typically, guidelines complement standards and procedures offering additional information or best practices that are not not compulsory. So standards are directive, but guidelines provide flexible suggestions for meeting policy intent or implementing requirements from standards and baselines. Guidelines can be internally developed or come from external sources such as vendors, professional security organizations, or frameworks such as ISO, NIST, or ITIL. So in essence, guidelines are recommended actions and operational guides providing flexibility where specific standards may not apply or uh, as a recommended approach to achieving applicable standards. They offer valuable references for addressing gray areas and supporting policies through additional details or explanations. So it is crucial to recognize that policies, guidelines, baselines, standards and procedures should not be treated as an afterthought but, but as integral elements for administ administering a secure environment effectively. Creating a single document containing aspects of all these elements is discouraged as each structure serves a distinct speci specialized function. Keeping them separate offers several advantages like accommodating different security classification levels, facilitating easier updates for affected material and aiding in maintaining a secure environment through comprehensive planning, design, structure and oversights. So in summary, policies are high level principles guiding decision making and then standards provide specific mandatory requirements and then baselines set a minimum security level. Procedures offer step by step implementation details and guidelines provide flexible recommendations. Together, they form a structured governance framework for information security. Let's see some examples for these. For policies, consider acceptable use policy. This describes the accept acceptable use of company resources, including computers, networks, and data. For example, employees are prohibited from using company computers for personal entertainment during working hours. Next, standards example is a password policy. This mandates the requirements for creating and managing passwords. For example, passwords must be at least 10 characters long, include uppercase letters, numbers, and special characters, and should be changed every 90 days. Next, baselines. Let's consider a server security baseline, which specifies the minimum security configurations for all servers within the organization. For example, all servers must have firewalls enabled, unnecessary services disabled, and operating system patches should be up to date. Next is procedures. Let's consider a user account creation procedure, which provides step-by-step -step instructions for creating user accounts in the organization systems. 
So the steps can include first is receive a user new user request form and verify its completeness. Then verify that the user's manager has signed the form. Then uh, verify that the user has read and agreed to the user account security policy. Next guidelines. Let's consider data encryption guideline uh, which offers flexible recommendations on how to implement data encryption. Like for example, consider using AES 256 encryption for sensitive data, but organizations may choose other encryption algorithms based on specific needs. So that's it about policies, standards, baselines and procedures and guidelines guys. I will see you in another video with more more uh, topics on CISSP. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share our videos. That helps us a lot. I will see you soon. Bye bye.